So welcome to the uh, post tea session. I am happy to invite Dr. Nasa. I mean, of you will know that uh, Dr. Nasa has spent a lot of time in the Ministry of Human Resource Development and has been always supportive of activities done by educational institutions. So welcome, Dr. Nasa, and all yours. Thank you, Professor Fatak. First of all, I would like to thank IIT Bombay and Professor Fatak to give me this an opportunity to interact with. I think everybody is able to hear me. So you have given me the opportunity to interact with mostly the tier one institutions uh, representatives, the directors of the institutions, registrars, and the vice chancellors. Uh, I was asked to present what is accreditation, what is NBA doing. Most of the institutions present here, they know what is accreditation and NBA, but for those who are not from the system, I will just give a brief note on the activities of the NBA and later on about our criteria and what are the activities going on. Uh, NBA was established in 1994 by AICT under 10, Section 10U of the AICT Act. It became independent in 2010, but in 2013, it became completely independent of AICTE administratively as well as financially. So now we are totally independent in decision making as well as financially and we do not receive any grants from Ministry of HRD or any other government agencies for the purpose. We are totally dependent on the fees we charge for the accreditation from the institutions. The fees for institutions, whether it is a government, private, central government, state government is same, there is no discrimination. Just a brief about uh, what accreditation in terms of NBA means, it is a process of quality assurance and improvement whereby a program in an in approved institution is critically appraised to verify that the institution or the program continues to meet and exceeds the norms and standards prescribed by the regulator from time to time. It is a kind of recognition which indicates that the program or institution fulfills certain standards. So these are our general policy on accreditation. Programs and not educational institutions are considered for accreditation. There are some institutions which write that XYZ College of Engineering is accredited by, N by NBA. That is totally wrong. And if uh, my request to all of you who are present or doing this activity, kindly remove that from your advertisement because we do not accredit an NBA uh, an institution. We accredit only the programs. And if you have to advertise, write that these programs are accredited by NBA. NAC does the accreditation of an institution or a university or a college. The program should be accredited, it should be offered by an educational institution which has been formally approved as an educational institution by the concerned regulatory authority. Rather, it is approved by AICTE or if it is deemed university by UGC or the State University Act and all that. And uh, at least two batches of the program should have, uh, the students who should have graduated for, from that program. And the programs are considered for assessment and accreditation only at the written request of the institution. We do not ask them to come to us. But they have to write, send a request to us saying that we, you want the program to be accredited. But now I think AICT has made some mandatory uh, requirement for increase in intake and additional courses and all that. What accreditation serves to notify? It notifies the parents and prospective students that a program has met minimum standards. Faculty, deans and administrators of the programs, strengths and weaknesses and by ways to improve the program for employers that graduates are prepared to begin professional practice, the public that graduates are aware of the societal considerations. What are the benefits of accreditation? These are demonstrate accountability to the public, it demonstrates the commitment to excellence, it strengthens consumer confidence, it facilitates continuous quality improvement, it improves staff morale, it recognizes the achievements and innovations, it facilitates information sharing. It gets priority in getting financial assistance from the regulatory bodies 
for the institutional point of view it helps the institutions to know its strengths and weakness and the opportunities coming. It initiates institutions into innovative and modern method of pedagogy. It gives institution a new sense of direction and identity, it provides society with reliable information of quality of education offered, it promotes intra and inter institutional interaction. Uh, till 2013 NBA was accrediting the programs on input and output based parameters. After 2013 the NBA criteria has moved to outcome based accreditation, I will come to be later on. Outcome based education is student centered learning and as Professor Shirdar was telling about the attributes that the student should have, it, uh, this outcomes uh, may include a range of skills and knowledge. Outcome based accreditation focus remains on evaluation of outcomes of the program though output and input parameters are also looked into. Input uh, parameters like infrastructure facilities, resources, administrative practices, academic as well as financial resources were evaluated and output like a success rate of students were predominantly evaluated earlier. What is the outcome based ec education? The main purpose is to accredit the programs where we want to know what should the student learn. It is not that how many students are getting passed. We know the, we wanted to know the qualities of the student and what the student should demonstrate to the professional world. Accordingly designing both curricula and delivery mechanism for which we are here today, teaching strategies to build the required skills and competence. These are the comp uh, graduate attributes, these are usually known in the Washington Accord as the graduate attributes. We need, we tell them as a program outcomes. These are specifically needed for the students once it graduates. These are engineering knowledge, problem analysis which Professor Fatak has been stressing since morning, design and development of solutions, conduct investigation of complex problems, modern tool usage, engineers and the society, environment and sustainability, ethics, individual and team working, communication, project management and finance and the lifelong learning. These are the 12 graduate attributes which a student should have after he has graduated. Now the NBA has introduced two tier system. One is the tier one documents that is applicable to engineering technology programs offered by academically autonomous institutions and by the university departments and constituent colleges the universities. Most of the participants present here are belongs to the the tier 1 group because they have the academic autonomy. The tier 2 document is for non-autonomous institutions that is those colleges and technical institutions which are affiliated to a university. They do not have any academic freedom. For both the same set of criteria have been prescribed for accreditation, but the weightage uh, is different for tier 1 and tier 2. Evaluation of tier 1 institution focus on program outcomes and program educational objectives. The, this is the more weightage given in that and the tier 2 institution focus remains as before on the student performance, facilities and technical support and the continuous improvement. These are typical examples of uh, tier 1 institutions, institutions of national importance like IITs, IIITs, NITs, universities, deemed universities, private universities and the autonomous institutions. And the tier 2 institutions are the colleges affiliated to universities not enjoying the privileges of academic autonomy and deliver programs prescribed by the university to which they are affiliated and the only university empowered to examine the enrolled students for award of degree. NBS criteria of accreditation, there are 9 in number. First is institutional vision, mission, vision and program educational objectives. Second is program outcome. Third is program curriculum fourth is student performance, fifth is faculty contributions, sixth is facilities and technical support, seventh is academic support unit and teaching learning process, governance, institutional support and financial resources and the lastly continuous improvement in attainment of outcomes. Now these nine criteria they are as existing as of today, but from 1st of June, five, six days before, tier two document has been redesigned it will have 10 criteria. It is already available on our website and we have started implementing uh, the new self assessment report based on 10 criteria. But the institution will have the flexibility 
till 30th September to opt for the earlier version and the or the new version. But from 1st October, it will be uh, the new system of uh, SAR tier 2 uh, that will be based on 10 criteria. These are the different uh, weightages for tier 1 and tier 2 institutions and uh, where you can compare that the vision mission, the, the marks, uh, the weightages given to tier 1 institution in vision mission is 100 in comparison to 75 and the program outcome is 225 in comparison to 150. And the student performance as I told you earlier, it is in tier 2 which is given more preference and the continuous improvement also given the most importance in the tier 2 system. The new uh, SAR tier 2 as I told you, we are going to have 10 criteria instance or in, in spite of uh, 9 earlier. The first is vision, mission and program educational objectives, program curriculum and teaching learning process. Here I would like to emphasize. Uh, then the teaching learning process, we are considering the initiatives taken in the uh, teaching, improving the teaching learning process where MOOCs can play a very important role. We had already in built into the new system. The third one is course outcome and our program outcomes, student performance, faculty information and contribution, facilities and technical support, continuous improvement. These are known as the, the program based criteria. And then we have uh, institutional level criteria, first year academics, though it was a little bit a part of earlier SAR also, but it was not being evaluated. And the, the most important thing here was most of the students who come from various backgrounds during the first year, they you, there is a lot, lot of difference and it was being neglected in earlier part of SAR. Now it will be a big part in, it will play a big role in the evaluations uh, from the new uh, SAR. The student support system and the governance institutional support and financial resources. So uh, it has been redesigned into 10 uh, criteria, and I would like to inform you for the tier 1 institutions also our new SAR is almost final and on 10th of June maybe 3 4 days after we will we are going to have our final meeting for finalizing the tier 1 document also, where most importance has been given to the teaching learning process and the program outcomes. But basically we want to see in the program outcome based accreditation is how much the student is learning. We were earlier dependent on only on the processes uh, that they, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, I mean curriculum has been revised or based on outcome and all that. But the attainment levels were not being looked into. But here, the more emphasis will be how much percentage, each percentage of each criteria or each graduate attributes program outcome has been attained. So that the emphasis will be more on the program out attainment level of the program outcome rather than the process being initiated by the tier one institutions. The tier one institutions are more matured institutions, so we will like to give more emphasis on the attainment levels. So that will be uh, finalized on 10th and it will be put up to our board. Once it approves it, we will circulate it to all the tier 1 institutions and put it on our website also to seek the comments uh, from all the stakeholders and if there will be any significant comments that will also be incorporated before notifying it for implementation. In tier 1 institutions, we evaluate based on the grades in each of the criteria and the grades are the marks if they are more than 70 equal to or more than approximately 75 percent or more then we give the grade as Y, Y is the compliance. Between 60 to 75 percent we call them as the compliance with concern. There are some concerns where the scope of improvement uh, where the institutions can address and the between 40 to 60 percent is called as the weakness they have to do a lot to improve in that particular criteria, less than 40 is a deficient criteria. For award of accreditation in the tier 1 institutions, out of 9 criteria an institution, the program has to get at least 7 Y's, that is 7 criteria should be fully compliant, that is the more, they should have more than 75 percent marks in at least 7 seven of the criteria and the remaining two criteria 
should be C that is compliance with concerns. There should be no weakness or the deficiency in that particular program. Then the program is accredited for, for 5 years and for and if there is some weakness in the remaining 2, 7 fully compliance and 1 or 2 weaknesses then we give them 3 months time and if that weakness can be converted into a compliance, uh, compliance with concerns or compliance uh, that the committee looks into then we give them 3 months compliance uh, time period and after the compliance report is received from the institution this is again re-evaluated and uh, accordingly decision is taken to accord the accreditation for 5 years otherwise they are accredited for 2 years. For 2 years uh, the decision is taken on at least 3 compliance any 3 criteria they should be fully compliant and there should be no deficiency in the faculty contributions. Others remaining uh, 6 can be weakness or concerns. Uh, the program is accredited for 2 years if they have three Y's and no D in the faculty, no deficiency in the faculty contribution. And if they have the deficiency in the faculty contribution, they are straight away rejected whether it is if remaining or even eight Y's will not accredit them. This is the most important criteria faculty contribution. They should not get less than 40 percent marks in that particular criteria. Procedure for accreditation is the institution has to submit the ESAR. First they have to register themselves on ENBA, most of the institutions are already registered on ENBA. After that they have to submit the fees and all that and submit the ESAR. The based on the SAR we constitute a committee, the committee visits the institution and the report is submitted to the moderation committee which we call it to identify the borderline cases. Borderline cases are where they are either the borderline for 2 years or for 5 years. So in TA2 it is 5 percent weightage is given on both sides out of 600 they may be somewhere in 5, 570 to 630. So they are treated as a borderline case and for 750 also 720 to 780. So th these are, those are considered a borderline cases. We convey those weaknesses and the concerns to the institution to send us uh, the report whether they agree to those recommendations or not. They cannot change the thing. There may be some mistakes by the evaluation team, maybe they may not note it properly also. There may be some facts which they can correct that the, the report given by the evaluator is not correct as on the date of the visit. But later on if they have added something that not considered. So the once that compliance report is received from the institution, it is sent to the team chair and team chair presents it before our evaluation engineering evaluation committee. In the presence of the team chair and the and the uh, team uh, the EEAC members the decision is taken the team chair has to present the case as if it is own institution because he has visited the institution to he presents the case of all the programs uh, to the uh, EEAC team and accordingly decision is taken for 2 years or 5 years or not accreditation. Then the recommendation of EEAC goes to our subcommittee of academic advisory committee which is chaired by a chairman NBA uh, Dr. Surender Prasad and they check the incons inconsistency between various institutions and the programs also. Accordingly the final decision is taken by the subcommittee of AUC and conveyed to the uh, institution concerned and the institution still if it is not uh, satisfied. Uh, they can appeal to us within 30 days of the date of the communication of uh, uh, the result. And in the appeal cases also they have to justify the reason as on the date of the visit not any additional information which has not been provided to the experts or to the in the SAR. And there also the team chair has, is called and the representative of the institution comes to the appellate committee and he presents his case in front of the chairman of the visiting team where both of the team has to agree that these things were available on that date or not. So accordingly the decision is taken by the appellate committee. So this is about the accreditation of uh, process. We keep the evenings of the visiting teams deliberately kept free of the activities to enable the team to complete the writing of the report which is a very lengthy report. So we usually keep, give the time of uh, the evening to the visiting team not for the social activities 
some of the institution uh, engage them in some social activities in the evening that I request you all of you not to do that. It is extremely important to note that the visiting team members do not indicate to the institution whether they would accredit or not accredit the program and the report is strictly confidential. After the conclusion of the exit meeting, all contacts of the institution should be through NBA only. After that, you cannot interact with the chairman or the visiting team members till the decision is. And NBA makes travel arrangement for the team members including accommodation and travel to and from the campus where the program is delivered through authorized travel agencies. So do not ask them for anything. That is my request to all of you. We, we do not accept the working lunch during the visit you have to not to do anything. NBA requires every team members to exhibit the highest standard of professionalism, honesty and integrity. It becomes the duty of chairperson to oversee these aspects. We are trying to involve as many evaluators from IITs, NITs, universities and some credible people who are really, they may, may be serving in IITs earlier, they have moved to private institutions and there are some private institutions which have been accredited for 5 years. They know all that outcome based accreditation. They have the knowledge of the system. We also involve them all during our visit. Evaluation team members must be objective and truthful in reports, statement and testimony. And the larger group sessions with either faculty or staff must be avoided. And it should be a totally a random sample. The students groups and the faculty groups are tutored in some of the institutions. Kindly avoid that. Let the team do his their own work. ET members uh, must strictly adhere to the visit schedule and they must avoid socializing even during the accreditation visit. They shall not solicit, accept any gratuities from the institutions. I have already told you about this. The visit should be conducted in a very polite and cordial atmosphere. If whether you agree with the evaluation team members or the even evaluation team members do not agree, kindly be polite, put up your case, do not argue. And we, uh, there are some evaluators also here I, I, I could see. So they have to be very polite and do not compare your institutions with the other institutions you are visiting. You have to simply verify the facts what are available in the institution. Accordingly, rep write the report. Do not compare them with IITs or NITs or university you belong to. So you have to see their what is presently there in the institution and be polite. Institutions shall not offer any gifts extra to the team members. I usually give a call in the morning of the visit to the institution concerned and tell the principal or the director, do not kindly do not do this. And if any team members also ask, kindly give a sharing. So that we are also aware of the fact that if there is some demand from anything, though all are credible people, but there may be some we, we cannot take any. So kindly ensure that this is not happen. The self assessment report is consisting of two parts, one is institutional and departmental part and part two seeks that information on these all nine criteria which I have been done and we will incorporate the new essay. We have already done it for tier two and for tier one also we will be doing the same. But it will be now having the three parts institutional information and the program level. The basic information of the institution will be there, but the institutional uh, parameters which will be there that will become the third part now. The, the India became a uh, member of the Washington Accord in June 2014, last year, and the next meeting of the Washington Accord is a weeks ahead, uh, maybe around 20th uh, June, that is in Turkey. Aware uh, this item of MOOCs blended course is also coming. So I cannot share with you right now because the agenda is totally confidential. Whatever will the decision will be, we will communicate it to all the concerned authorities. And but MOOCs has been already incorporated in not exactly written as a MOOCs, but the new in, in methods in teaching and learning and that should be demonstrated and that should be well publicized in your website also that you are doing it and others can really copy it or maybe modify and improve the system also. That should be implemented by other institution also. Thank you very much. Sir.